All right, I'm back at it with this Vivor Diesel heater project. This is a mobile home AC return air vent. Um, I decided to install it in here because it won't permanently alter the structure and we can test it out and see how it works. I drilled out the spot welds in this box, um, this, this return air vent, and I've uh, mounted a piece of half inch plywood in the bottom. So you can see it's installed here. Um, I've got a, I guess it's like a two, no, it's, I think it's, I don't know, it's two or three and a quarter inch hole. I forget what size the hole saw is, but it's basically pulling fresh air in from the outside at this point. And I've got that area where the exhaust vent, where the heat comes out of, kind of file fit in there to um, that metal flange. You can see there's a hole drilled for the wiring to go outside and it's coming through that sloppy fit in the floor. There's the grate on, looks pretty decent. Like, you know, it's it's down in the floor. It's not getting in the way of anything. I did buy some black paint to repaint that vent and then the inside of the box. So it just looks a little less conspicuous. Um, I don't mind the orange, so I probably wouldn't paint that. So let's go to the air handler in this unit. This is a 220 volt electric heat um, heating unit that blower motor is also 220 volts I'm off grid I have my power based off of a 120 volt um, generator it's not a 220 volt generator so all this crap kind of needs to go um, I won't be able to circulate air using that 220 volt circuit you can see a lot of the wiring for the heater coils and breakers um, I'm gutting all of this <clears throat> out of there because I'm not going to be using any of that. And what I'm doing is I'm going to utilize this heavy gauge wiring that's already there. And we're going to step it down from 220 to um, 120 volts. You can see there's the breaker with those two wires. Those are both hot wires because, you know, it's a dual phase circuit. So um, what I'm going to be doing is pulling this breaker out and getting another, uh, I guess it's Simmons, Siemens, however it said, the appropriate breaker for the box. Apparently that's pretty important that you have the same brand breaker for the box that you're using. So I'm going to be pulling this out and, you know, just to make things transparent in case it stays like this and somebody else gets it, I soldered a white neutral wire onto where that red wire is. I've shrink wrapped it and I've since labeled it neutral. And you can see that um, it's going to end up hooked up to that neutral bar down there. Just that way, if, you know, I sell this thing and somebody else gets into it, there's, there's no confusion. Um, and then you can see that the black wire is, you know, hooked up to the new breaker. Um, I have another breaker that's not being used in there so that there's not an open space in the breaker box. I'm soldering this one in. You know, maybe a, uh, what I'm going to refer to as a mechanical connection would have been better, like a copper or brass crush fitting, but I just chose to do the soldering. So now I've got a box hooked up in here. You can see I've got all the plates where the heater circuits were blocked off. Now, this is just a blower motor that I had sitting around. So now, um, you know, it doesn't move that much. I think it moves like 200 CFM or something like that. But we are moving some air through the vent. So the air that comes off of that heater is getting recirculated. Now, I decided to do a modification to this mobile home AC return air vent. You can see where I had a coal cut where the air intake for the heater unit was going out. And now there's an oval shaped one. So I'm basically, instead of having it pull in cold air from the outside, it's going to recirculate the air from the inside. So it's not having to heat up <clears throat> whatever the ambient temperature, temperature is outside. Um, so um, it should be more efficient this way. And also, too, if you want to get a little nerdy, when you're pulling air from the outside to inside, you're kind of creating a positive pressure, which will, you know, push more of the hot air out. So you can see I've made like what I'm going to call a real little return air box. That's just half inch plywood screwed together. And, you know, it's a duct. So I've got some duct tape around the outside of it. And um, I'm just sticking that back through the floor and then attaching that with some metal screws and you can see that oval shape, that's where it's pulling air from inside of the mobile home 
through the air intake of the V-Bore diesel heater, and then it's blowing the exhaust out. That's your heated air. And, it, you know, it still looks the same, but now it's going to function a little better. So I took all that that I gutted before out of that um, air handler box. I don't know what the deal is with these mobile homes, the way they're constructed. What you're seeing here is like a finished product. Um, originally, I you know pulled that whole air handler unit out. And this is like what they have in here is like a duct board, but it's not like some of the new style stuff where it's just like a rigid foam board. It kind of looks like, you know, just like insulation to me. Um, I was concerned about having a 12 inch blower that pushes 1600 CFM, just blasting on that and kind of stirring up dust and debris. And then that metal piece that you see was like very poorly fitting and restricting the airflow. I had to trim that thing up and refit it to where it actually allowed air to flow freely through these vents. It's just a real mixture of poor design, poor materials, and poor installation um, all just coming together. And then that silver stuff you see is like the liner for like insulation for like flex duct. I just took the insulation off and put that in the bottom. That way the air would be blowing against that and then, you know, going to our left and right through this vent system and not just stirring up dust. So here's this blower motor. This is a Air Infinity Cloud Series 12 inch blower. Um, it does 1600 CFMs. Um, your fan speed is like 10 speeds. Um, this thing's really quiet and powerful. I haven't really put it above four and you've got this Bluetooth controller. These things are kind of um, intended for uh, marijuana growing, but they also work well for air duct systems. You know, that's kind of what they're used for in that industry. Anyhow, I've got a six inch version of this in my other tiny house and it works really great. I think that one only does like 400 CFM, but it's Bluetooth and you can get on your phone. Like I can adjust the fan speed for my other tiny house or see what the temperature is. Like we've had lows of eight degrees now, so I can see what temperature um, it's hitting. I keep this thing in manual mode. Now I recently hooked up water to this thing and the pipes were already broken. That explained why a lot of the insulation was pulled down. Um, so we're losing a lot of efficiency due to poor insulation there. And then we'll also take a look at the underbelly. Like the way these things are put together is kind of crappy. It's basically got this underbelly. There was some type of rodent infestation in here to where they've just trampled and destroyed the insulation. So all that really kind of needs to be redone. So this one 8,000 kilowatt heater has been heating this thing up pretty good, except for, you know, when the temperatures get real low to like eight degrees. I actually bought a second one and I'm going to, I guess, toggle between running one or two at different speeds. And when I say that, I mean in manual mode, I prefer manual mode. The thermostat setting doesn't seem to work really well. But I do like where this one's mounted in the front room. That's going to stay there. That's a good setup. Um, but I did buy some wiring. I bought, um, I guess it's the three wire. I'm going to wire this into um, that to where, you know, right above this air handler, I'll have my controller up there instead of in proximity to the one in the front. And I'm going to put this second heater inside of this box, but I'm going to have the actual heat blowing into the next remover, not into the box because I don't want to overheat that blower motor. And that return air vent will pick up the heat that's going to the next room that you see off to the right there and just kind of disperse it through the vents. But, you know, this is a neat project. I'm kind of enjoying this and it's a very cheap alternative um, I have the fuel outside, which has been fine up until an eight degree night. The fuel did gel and the thing shut down um, just because the, the fuel filter was gelled. The lines were fine. Could have been some water that was trapped in there. But um, again, I've said in another video, when you go to Vivor's site, if you sign up, which is basically just putting your email in, 
you know, these $130, 8,000 watt units, you can get them, I think, for like 97 bucks. So to have two heaters for 97 bucks a pop, that's not bad. You know, maybe I run both of them on a five or one on a seven and one on a three, whatever the, the outcome seems to work out. Or maybe I just run one because, you know, when it's only 32 degrees out, just the one does fine. I just don't want to have not enough heat on a cold day. So I'll have three controllers there, one for one heater, one for the second heater, and then one for the blower motor all mounted kind of below that vent there. And, you know, you can just kind of operate it as if it was a normal um, HVAC system. But, you know, I guess just on multiple panels. So you can, you know, do both heaters or one and then do your fan adjustments. And the second one I bought is a Bluetooth one. Um, the first one I bought, I meant to buy a Bluetooth one, but I did not. Um, so yeah, it will be nice to be able to control all those from a phone. But yeah, stay tuned on this one. This is just kind of an evolving process. Um, you know, trying to figure out ways to make this work on a 120 volt circuit, you know, running off of my generator um, as I have free time. But this is a great alternative um, to get away from the electric heat or if you're in an off-grid setting. Um, it's a low-cost alternative um, that you can kind of just do a DIY on. But I appreciate it, guys. I'll see you on the next one.